let's solve problem 4.2 by Cedra and Smith in their book, Microelectronic Circuits, the eighth edition. So in this problem, we have several different circuit diagrams with an ideal diode, and we want to determine the voltage and current marked on these circuits. So let's briefly review just some diode essentials. So here we have our diode. We have the anode on the left side and the cathode on the right side. There may be some current conducting across the diode and there's going to be some kind of voltage drop across the diode. And what is the current and voltage relationship look like for a diode? So here we have voltage, here we have current. Excuse my poor handwriting. <laughs> so what is this going to look like? Well, as the voltage drop across the diode is less than zero, there will be no current. It will act like an open circuit. But once the voltage drop equals zero, it will act like a short circuit and it will conduct current. So we identify these two regions as or biased and reverse biased. So or biased is when the diode goes from high potential to low potential. Basically, the voltage drop is greater than or equal to zero. The, dry, the diode will experience no voltage and it will conduct current and behave like a short circuit. But when the voltage drop across the diode goes from low to high potential, we call this reverse bias. Voltage is less than zero, which means there's no current conducting and it behaves like an open circuit. So whenever you do a problem like this, you first want to determine are we in the forward bias region or the reverse bias region? So here we see this diode goes from plus 5 volts on the anode to negative 5 volts on the cathode. So is this high to low potential or low to high potential? Well, it's obviously high to low potential because we have this positive 5, negative 5, so the difference is plus 10 volts. So we're in the forward bias region for this problem. Which means this diode is going to behave like a short circuit. So knowing that V equals IR and I equals V over R from Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can calculate the current to be 5 volts minus negative 5 volts divided by 10 kilo ohms using nodal analysis. This is going to equal a 1 milliamp which means the voltage using Kirchhoff's voltage law again is equal to five volts minus 10 kilo ohms multiplied by one milliamp because V equals IR. And this equals negative five volts. Let's do a little sanity check. So if this is negative five volts here, and then we cross across this diode that acts like a short circuit, that means there should be no voltage drop here. So sure enough, we are still at negative five volts at the end of the circuit, and this part A is solved. You with diagram B. So here we have our diode, and from the circuit, we need to determine if it's four biased or reverse biased. So the anode is connected to a negative five volt source, and from the cathode side, we can see that there is plus 5 volts. So is this forward biased or reverse biased? Well, we see that we're going from a low to a high potential, which means that this is going to be reverse biased, and it's going to act like an open circuit. The diode is going to act like an open circuit. So now we can proceed with our circuit analysis. So my professor always taught me that an open circuit is like a giant resistor. So we can essentially perceive this as the entire plus five volts is dropping a negative five at this diode because it's acting like a giant resistor. That means in this case, V is equal to negative five. And we already know from the voltage current ratio that when the voltage drop is 
is less than zero, the current equals zero. So any time that the diode is reverse biased, you can immediately determine that the current equals zero. Let's continue. Diagram C. So here we have our diode, and on the anode side, we have plus five volts. And on the cathode side, we can see a negative five volt source. So we can see that this is forward biased because we're going from a high potential plus five volts to a low potential, negative five volts, which means that this diode will act like a short circuit. So again, we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law to calculate the current, which would be equal to plus five volts minus negative five volts divided by 10 kilo ohms, which is again equal to one milliamp. The voltage we can calculate either by using KVL and going up, saying negative five volt plus 10 kilo ohms times the current, which is one milliamp, which is equal to plus five volts. Or we can just understand that the diode experiences a zero volt drop because it's an ideal diode, which means this plus five volts just carries over to here.